Hi friends, just look at this fascinating exercise we have here. The shaded area of this figure is 9 halves square units. Let's demonstrate. First, we need to find where our figure starts and where it ends. That is, we need this point here. And this is the point here. Okay, so how are we going to find them? By equating the two functions we have here, we have function f of x and g of x. Perfect. So, este, so let's unify, let's equate these two functions first and f of x, which is this here. We've got x minus 2 squared plus 1 half. Perfect. And on the other side, there will be g dx, that is x plus 1 half. And look how wonderful. Here we can eliminate this medium with these atama mediums. And we'll have these binomial squares that will work out. So the first term squared would be x squared minus the double product of the first by the second, which would be 4x plus the second term squared, which would be 4 because 2 squared is 4. And this is equal to x. Perfect. We move this x to the left side and we get x squared minus 4x plus 4. And this is like minus 6. And this equals 0. Very good. And here we have then minus 4x and minus x is minus 5x. And here plus 4, perfect. And this is going to be equal to 0. Here we have a quadratic equation that we can solve using the quadratic formula. Or alternatively by factoring, in this case we'll factorize. And look, for those who don't know, this here is a trinomial in the form of x squared plus bx plus c. Alright, so first we'll solve by taking the square root of this term, which is x, and put it in both parentheses. Now this sign goes here, and the multiplication of this sign by this sign here, negative times positive gives me negative. Be very careful, because we need two numbers that multiply to give 4, and that add or subtract to give negative 5. Those numbers are 4 and 1, see? Negative 4 times negative 1 gives me positive 4. And when we add it, minus 4 plus minus 1 gives me minus 5. We have two factors set to 0, so we can set each factor to 0. x minus 4 equals 0, and x minus 1 also equals 0. Solving for x, we have x equals 4 here. And here that x equals 1. Perfect. Now we know where our figure starts and where it ends. It starts when x equals 1, that is here, fixed. And it ends when x equals 4. Visually, you could see it came up to here. But we need to go through the process to know exactly where it reaches. What we're going to do is perform an integral to find the shaded area. And I'm going to explain it. How do we perform these integrals? And why is it a subtraction of functions and not an addition? I'm going to explain it because in previous videos, people had asked me about it. No, I'm going to erase this here. Remember, it's 9 halves, right? Let's erase this and I'll explain. Look closely. To find the shaded area, the shaded area will be equal to, to the integral from where it starts, where the image starts. Well, it starts from 1, right? So from 1 to where it ends, which is at 4 on x. Alright, and the function that's above, like a ceiling, which is g dx, pay attention to the function g dx minus the function f of x, which is the function underneath, which is this over here. Very well. Alright, now someone here asked me, why is it g dx f dx? And it is not an addition, I will explain it. Look, pay close attention to the image, the shaded area will be erased. Alright now, the integral, pay close attention, the shaded area, do the integral from 1 to 4. Pay close attention only to the function that's in blue, which is linear. So when we are integrating, we are figuring out the area under the curve, so to speak. Because here it's a straight line. Right? So we're finding the area under this function until we reach the positive x-axis. That is when we're integrating g of x, what we're really doing is finding this entire area here, the whole area under the line. So what happens when we are integrating, when we are integrating from 1 to 4 of f of x, f dx, f dx, f dx. So when we integrate this here, we're finding the area under this green curve because the green curve is f of x. So what we're really finding with this here is this area, see? 
Notice this entire area here. So what happens if we subtract this area from the entire area? So what do we have left here? We have the shaded area. That's why the difference between these two areas gives us the shaded area. Actually, here we have the subtraction of two functions. But when we integrate, we are talking about areas under the curve. All right, I hope you clearly understood how integrals are done and why, right? Now let's erase all of this and continue over here, okay? All right, let's erase then. All right, we are here with our exercise. I forgot to tell you that the integrals we're going to put here, it would be better to say they're definite integrals. See, it's definite because it goes from 1 to 4. All right, then from 1 to 4, as we already said, about the function above, which is this. Let's write it directly. x plus 1 half minus. The function below is the quadratic function, which is this here. So we would have x minus 2 squared over here, plus 1 half perfect, and this of x. All right, let's continue. We have that the shaded area of the integral from 1 to 4 of x plus 1 half, very good, minus. And we're going to expand this binomial squared, which we had already done before, right? So what do we have left? We have x squared minus 4x. And then this plus 1 half. Eh? Perfect. And clear all of this here from x. Very well, all of this here, the shaded area then is going to be equal to the integral from 1 to 4 of x plus 1 half. Very well, minus times positive is minus x squared, then minus times minus is plus 4 k. Then a negative times a positive gives me negative 4. And look, here we are going to do this addition right away, right? All right, let's leave it like this because later the one half will be removed, okay? So negative times positive gives me negative four. And negative times positive gives me negative one half. Good, then as for why I left it like that, don't add them because here we have a positive one half. And with this negative one half, it cancels out perfectly. So we have that the shaded area is going to be equal to the integral, ladies and gentlemen. First, let's put the term that is squared. Squared minus x squared. Then 4x plus x gives me five x and finally it ended here that does not have x which is the all of this of x is perfect and now we are going to integrate and you will realize that it is very easy to integrate this function here all right now the integral of a variable raised to an exponent when we are talking about the x would be and i can simply the cinema sita all right this exponent will be increased by one look we're going to write down the variable minus we increase the exponent by one and we get three three and this same number we have here is placed as the denominator so the integral of a power will give us a fraction all right let's move on to the second one okay then we have plus 5x and notice here it has no exponent but it's implied that there's a one right at one o'clock if we add another one then it would be at two o'clock and this two also goes here in the denominator all right now keep in mind that this four has no x but let's pretend it has an x to the zero okay so what happens if we add 1? We get minus 4x to the power of 1. And this 1 also goes in the denominator. Any number over 1 remains the same number. And any number raised to the power of 1 remains the same. Perfect number. And here, sorry, here is no longer about x, but the integration limits from 1 to... Perfect. We already have the shaded area here. And now we just need to evaluate it when it's 4 and when it's 1. Let's erase this here so we can continue, okay? So we deleted this from here. Excellent. So we have, first we're going to evaluate with 4. So it remains, let's put it in brackets, and minus 4 cubed over 3, very good, plus 5 times 4 squared over 2, ah, perfect, and minus 4 times 4. Great, and now we're going to subtract all of this from here. Obviously, evaluated when it equals 1. So first we would have negative 1 cubed, which gives us 1 third. More uh, 5 times 2. Times 1 squared, sorry, which gives us 1. So we have 5 halves. And finally, we have minus 4 times 1, which gives us minus 4. 
Fantastic. Now over here, we'll see that the shaded area is equal to 4 cubed. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. We're almost done. So 64 divided by 3. Over here, see, uh, uh, we have 4 squared, which is 16. 16 divided by 2 gives us 8, and 8 times 5 gives us 40. Perfect. And then 4 times 4 minus 16. Alright, minus times minus gives us plus 1 third. Then minus times plus gives us minus 5 halves. And then minus times minus gives us plus 4. Alright, now let's continue over here. The shaded area will be the same. Ah, look, here we have whole numbers. Let's put the whole numbers first. We have 40 minus 16. That would be 24. We write 24 here. And look, we have plus 4 here too. So right away, it's 28. We did this, this, and this here. Alright, now let's continue with this one here. Minus 5 halves. And finally, these two terms here. This term with this term. Term. Since the fractions have the same denominator, we keep the denominator which is 3. Okay. And going up, let's see. That negative 64 is indeed larger than 1. So this one's going to be negative, right? So minus 64 plus 1 is minus 63. It looks like this. Perfect. And notice that this part is erased since we didn't need it. The highlighted area is going to be the same. Let's do these two terms first. 2 times 28 is 56. And 56 minus 5 is 51.5. Perfect. We did these two here. And we have negative 63t left. Okay. So we see that the shaded area is equal to the least common multiple, which is 6. Alright, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 times 51 is a 150 C. Very good. Then 6 divided by 3 is 2 minus... 2 multiplied by 63 is 126. Alright, and here we have the shaded area being equal to... At the end of the 27 6. Very well. And if we simplify, ladies and gentlemen, this would be... Here we get that the shaded area is one third of 27, which is 9, and one third of 6, which is 2. We are left with 9 half square units, just as we predicted from the start. Fascinating. Let me know in the comments if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe and give it a like so you don't miss the next challenge. See you another time. Bye bye.